Well, hello everyone, we're live. It's me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio with another Tuesday Tips Live. And today's Tuesday Tips Live is all about the decks you saw at the very beginning here, the Pioneer DJ CDJ 3000s. We're talking through 10 tricks, tips, Easter eggs, just little things you may not know about these. This is designed for you if you are someone who uh, is new to this and wants to know what's so cool about these players. Maybe you're gonna play in a club and you want to be able to uh, hit the ground running with them. Maybe you've ordered some uh, and you're looking forward to getting under the skin of them. Or maybe you've got them and you're like, oh, this must be so much I don't know about those players. That's what this is all about today. I'm going to give you 10 tips, tricks and Easter eggs about these players. And hopefully by the end of it, you will have learned at least something. So if you want to ask questions, you can do so. We're live on YouTube, Twitch, and on our Facebook page. Uh, we'd love you to ask questions about these. Uh, we'd be here to talk about them afterwards. But for people watching the replay of this, let's get stuck in straight away and start talking about the 10 things that we think are worth, really worth your time when it comes to these things. So the first thing, the biggest thing is the key sync. So these have got key sync on them, which is cool as it is. But if you've ever used Keysync on any DJ software, then you'll know that it is a pretty useless function. Why do I say Keysync is pretty useless? Surely it's a great thing to be able to use. Well, here's the issue with Keysync. It's not intelligent. If you hit Keysync on the wrong track, it might move your track seven notes up or seven notes down. Now, if you play a note on a piano keyboard and then move up seven notes, you'll see that that is a big big change and that is enough to really mess up your mix so that makes keysync useless on serato tractor even on record box and on uh, virtual dj all dj software in fact that's why here at digital dj tips we've been pushing for half a decade now something we call fuzzy key mixing which is a special way around that it lets you mix anything into anything in key or likely to be in key without worrying about it sounding bad. And it involves shifting the key just a couple of semitones up or down. I can't go into that here now, it'll take too long, but the important thing to tell you is, Pioneer DJ has seen the light. When you press the key sync button on a Pioneer DJ CDJ 3000, uniquely among any DJ gear out there, it uses the same methodology that we use to teach what we call fuzzy key mixing, and will only ever move your track up or down by one or two notes. This is absolutely huge, people, and it means that you can hit that key sync button basically with quite a lot of confidence that it's gonna sound all right. Not always, because even one or two notes up or down can sound a bit bad, but it's a lot closer to what key sync should be like. By the way, it's also got key shift on it, so you can shift the key of tracks on these things as well. So if you are, uh, if you are let's just load some tracks on here. Let's just whip this out and whip it in again. some reason it's really not liking that. Uh, there we go, we're in. Come on, thank you. Uh, if we were to load a track up uh, here, let's just load that one up there. No, there's nothing in there. Let's just grab a playlist. Grab a track out of one of our playlists. That'll do. Right, we've got a track loaded up here on the deck. Uh, if we were to hit uh, the, uh, the key shift button here, there's a whole load of, let me just do a zoom in on that for you so you can see it a little bit better. There's a whole load of key functions here. You can move the whole key of the track up and down. I mean, this is really cool. This is awesome. This is something that has never appeared on a player like this before, but it is, uh, it is in here now. So this is really cool, but the key sync is the one. The way they've changed the key sync is really quite something. And uh, that's the one thing that I just think is amazing about these players. I'm so pleased to see that. So they've got really good key sync. It actually works. The second of our tips, chicks and Easter eggs about these players, the Pioneer DJ CDJ 3000s. In order to show you this, I'm actually gonna to have to go back to the player and I'm gonna to have to load a track which is not um, something that other people have made that is one of our tracks. Because if I don't do that, we're just gonna get this taken off the air and we don't want that. So right, here's one of our tracks. So uh, the thing I wanna show you here then is that if you are in a loop, so let's just, uh, hopefully I can get this to play and hopefully you can hear this. Obviously, I can't get this to play and you can't hear it. Let's set it to digital. There we go. Right. You still can't hear it. I'll work on, I'll work on getting you to hear that. 
Uh, let's just try and dial that in for you. Maybe you can actually. No, I don't think you can. You can hear that now. Yep, yeah, you can. Cool. Right. You can tell we're live. Right. So I've got the track playing here. Now let's put a loop on this. Let's just put a four beat loop on it. So that's now looping. You can see the loop that's looping around here. Zoom in, see that a bit better. Let's just halve that loop. Whoops, didn't mean to press that. Let's set that loop again. And there we go. We've got short loop, a one beat loop going there, just to make this really clear what I'm showing you. Now you have this thing called beat jump inside the Pioneer CDJ3000 operating system, which will jump the whole track forward or back by the set number of beats. And you can actually set the number of beats here. But now I've got a loop playing, it'll keep that loop. So it's now jumped forward. I'm now in the break, but it's kept that one beat loop. Still in the break, out the break. So you can jump through your track within a loop that you've set using beat jump and loop together. Now this is pretty cool. It can be really useful for, for instance, for acapellas. So you could be um, DJ with an acapella that you've got nicely beat gridded and you could have it chopped so that the vocals being chopped up and you can move backwards and forwards totally in time and over the other playing track by putting a loop on and then using the beat jump to move within that loop. Really like that. So this is a whole set of tips and tricks about using these uh, players. And the next one is something that is just fun. So you might have noticed looking at the player I have here, uh, again, if I zoom in a little bit tighter on it, it might be easier to spot this thing. We've got a nice pink USB here and a nice little pink stripe there as well and a little bit of pink here on the screen. You can actually change that color if you want. So by going into the source here, I can select a whole load of colors here. So if I wanted it to be yellow, I'll just pick yellow in there. So now we have a yellow stripe, a yellow flashing bit, and a yellow dot on there. And the other colors are available as well. So it's, uh, it's a bit of fun you can have. But also actually, it could be useful if you are using playing for multiple USBs. Uh, you'll know immediately if you've plugged in the right USB when you turn on your system by color coding it like that. The next tip then I have for you is about the types of waveform because for, I'm not sure how this worked on the CDJ2000 that came previously. These aren't all new to the CDJ3000 by the way. Some of them are, but not all of them. So you get a nice choice of waveform colors here as well. So let's go and have a little zoom in on the waveforms here. This is currently set to a waveform color that's quite similar to the way Den and DJ does it with three frequencies. Uh, you've got the blue, the yellow, and the brown frequencies to represent low, mid, and high frequencies there. But you can also, by going into the shortcut menu, you can, check, you can pick RGB. So now we've got um, an RGB color, or you can just go for the kind of classic blue if you don't like that kind of style of waveform and you just like it to be in blue. Uh, but you've got that choice there in the shortcut of the kind of waveforms you want. I'm a fan of the, the, the new default really, the three band. I think they look really nice. The next thing I want to show you then is that, this is back to the key functions of the unit. Let's just zoom out so you can see the whole unit there. Now, Pitch faders, right, will turn the track speed down and up. And of course, with, you, with your master tempo on, you won't hear the pitch going up or down because this holds the key where it was. This track is in the key of 9A, it says 9A there. Also says 9A here because that's the currently playing key. And when we move this up and down, that key doesn't change, even though the BPM is going up and down by quite a lot. Doesn't matter how much we move the BPM, the key stays the same. If we turn master tempo off, then the key is going up and down, right? We'd expect that because the pitch is moving as well. But the key display here tells us that. So we're currently in 9A and it's actually playing 9A, but if I move down, it moves to 2A at about minus 4%. And these are Camelot keys, by the way. You can have this set to normal keys if you want. And 7A. So one, two, three, four, five different keys in plus or minus 10% are available to us. 
This could be really useful to you if you are the kind of DJ who likes the idea of sometimes doing key mixes and mashups and so on, but you really don't like the master tempo because master tempo does degrade the audio quality a little bit when you're moving up and down. Most people don't care, some people do. But I think it's nice that they've displayed the new key that you're moving to. Some software does this, some doesn't, but it's there on the CDJs and I think that's cool. The next tip then, we're doing tips on the CDJ 3000s, uh, tips, trips and Easter, ticks, trips, trips, ticks <laughs> and Easter eggs on the CDJ 3000. The next tip is that you can set the units to show you more information than on some media players like this really easily to make it easier when you're searching for tracks. So let's have a look. I'm going to zoom in on the display here. So at the moment, let's know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out of this playlist because this is a weird playlist of uh, digital DJ tips stuff. Uh, and I'm going to go to some kind of like normal music, if you like. Uh, so here's a normal playlist of normal tracks. Um, and these are now currently telling us the name of the track down here. That's cool, we can see the name of the track. But what if you wanted the artist column there? Well, there's no artist column there, but you can do that by tapping this little arrow here and selecting artist. So now we've got the artist down there as well, which is cool because we can now sort by artist and they're alphabetically ordered by artist. And it's not only artists you can put there, you can put the um, rating, the, um, and there's other things as well, by the way, there's, other, there's ways of changing what you can see. And you can change the size of the font as well. So you can get a really useful display in here. You can turn off those preview waveforms as well. Preview is useful because you can listen to these tracks, but you can turn that off if you want. So the way they've done the screen, the way they've used the bigger real estate here uh, is really useful and it's getting close to the way it works with software. Uh, and I like that, it's just, uh, it just makes it a lot easier when you're using the system to be able to put that extra information in there, sort by that information and so on. So the next thing I wanna cover is the settings that you can have going on this when you load from USB. So you've seen me put a USB drive in here and load from USB into this unit. But if I were to go into the source menu here, there is this thing called My Settings Load. And if I tap My Settings Load, it says your settings were loaded to player. And this is a really useful thing because over in the Rekordbox software, when you're preparing your set to, to DJ with, so over in the Rekordbox software, you, just getting the software on the screen for you so I can show it to you. There we go. You can export lots of stuff to the DJ system directly. So for instance, we looked at the waveform colors. You can have the waveforms in blue, three band RGB. You can have that specified. You can specify whether the waveform current position is down the middle or off to the left. You can choose whether the key format is alphanumeric or Camelot, as I just showed you the key, or classic key. You can uh, choose the categories that show down the left-hand side of the screen. So if we go and have a look at the, uh, at the screen itself here and go back into this browse menu here, down the left-hand side here, we can browse all kinds of stuff, artist, album, track, key, history, matching folder, and so on. Uh, and that's cool, but you might not want those. You might want to look at something else there. Well, you can choose what it is you want to have, and you can see that these are the choices that I'm looking at now and put them onto your USB. And there's other things as well, there's the columns that you have available for sorting uh, and so on. There's lots and lots of stuff here that you can change. Uh, and there's other, other settings as well, not, they're not the only ones. Uh, and once you set those, once you've exported from your copy of your record box software on your laptop, as I've got here, once you export that to your USB drive, and you do what I just did there and go to source, you can actually load those across the system. So if you turn up in a club and the system is set up differently to the way you like it, with one tap, you can have all the settings where you want them. You can even have mixer settings as well, assuming that like I've got here, and like most clubs will have, I would guess, uh, you've got a standard Pioneer mixer somewhere sat in the middle as well. Pretty cool. Right, that's kind of the Easter eggs and tips and tricks, but I do want to share with you three other things. One thing that's cool, one thing that some people don't understand the need for, and one thing which is still funny, I still find it funny. So what are those three things? Let's, um, let's, let's nip round to the back of the unit actually. Uh, let's try, there we go, we're around the back of the unit now to look at them. So the first thing is that you don't need to use the audio outputs on the back. You see my audio outputs here, my red and green 
outputs, you don't need to use those. And that's because as long as you've got a Pioneer mixer or another mixer that can take a digital input, which I have, you can use one RCA cable here, which is the digital cable, which is plugging into the digital inputs on the mixer, which are here. And that means that you're not going from digital to analog inside the CDJ. And then in the mixer, which also works in digital, so the mixer will convert it from analog back to digital again, and then back to analog again. So you've got an extra conversion that you don't need. This keeps the audio quality much higher, than, well, a little bit higher than it would have been otherwise. A second thing that, um, this is the thing that people often don't understand, and you might have noticed I've got this box here. What is that box? It's an absolutely crucial part of the way this system works. The box is an ethernet router an ethernet switch rather. This has got an ethernet cable or pro DJ link as Pioneer DJ calls it running from each of the units into there. And there's an extra one running into the, into the um, mixer and there's actually an extra one running off to the internet. We won't talk about that. So we've got the internet switcher, sorry, <laughs> gotta stop saying internet. We've got the, the network switcher here. Why, why have we got that? Because my USB is plugged in here, but I can access the same tracks over here on this player. On the waveform screen, I can see on this player, were I to have a track loaded on the other player over here, I would be able to see the waveform on the master player and the other player at the top. So you see at the top here, let's stop that again. And we are in our CDJ mode, so we'll stop that. I've got the waveform for both tracks here, and even then I can tap on there, and I've now got a like beats and bars marker on here, and let's zoom in on that a little bit closer so you can see it. See here, these are beats and bars on each of the tracks. You can see they're synced up now. And the reason it can do all this clever stuff across both of the units is because we have this. Now this doesn't come in the box, they supply the ethernet cables, but they don't supply the switcher, but this is a little TP-Link switcher. It's got to be powered. I think it's got to be powered anyway, but ours is definitely powered. Um, this is a $20 purchase, but these really do need this to work. So some people were like, well, why do you need to network them together? Surely that's just advanced feature. No, 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 that is really important to do that. And the final thing, which is just a funny thing as we count down our 10 tips, tricks, and Easter eggs on the CDJ3000, is it hasn't got an eject button for the CDs because it hasn't got a slot for the CDs. This is purely digital nowadays. It doesn't have any CD involved in it at all. I guess you could call it a Club DJ um, 3000 or something, uh, but it certainly isn't a CD player. There's nothing on the front of these at all. For the first time in the history of these things, they are just purely digital. So don't think CDJ means that you can play all your old CD collection because you can't. Right, so that's been our 10 tips. We've looked at the fuzzy key mixing, what we call fuzzy key mixing. We've looked at the beat jump using it inside a loop. We've looked at colored USBs to make them look nice on your CD players or your non-CD players. We've looked at the three types of waveforms, the key changing with the master tempo off, uh, having a second column in the library to make it easier to sort and see your tunes, uh, loading your settings from Rekordbox. By the way, you can save your settings as well. So if you're using the system, it's set up how you want it. You can save it back to that USB and then put it back to your uh, mothership on your laptop. Uh, we've looked at using digital instead of using the analog outputs for better quality. Uh, we've looked at the importance of having networks set up on it uh, and the fact that there's no CD slots. So if you're coming back to this after a 10 year break and thinking, I'll buy some CDJs, I can use them with my laptop and my CDs. You can't, it's only digital nowadays. Right, that is the end of the broadcast. Listen, we are in the middle of recording. Uh, by the way, we're, we're coming to you if you're asking questions, so don't worry, it's not the end of the, uh, it's not the, end of the show, just the end of the, uh, the training bit. Um, we are in the middle of recording a tutorial on these things. That's why I've got them set up. That's why I'm kind of rediscovering all the goodness in them. It's gonna be about a two hour tutorial. It's gonna be completely free, video training manual. It's gonna be on our YouTube page, uh, but it is something that you will not find out about as easily if you don't, uh, if you don't come and uh, join in uh, and you can join in very very easily by going to the Digital DJ Tips website there, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, that will get you uh, a copy of our book. It will get you a membership of the site, which means we can send you emails and, uh, and, and free training every week in our Tuesday tips. But it also means we can let you know and send you that video when it goes live. So do join us uh, by going to that link I just showed you. There it is again. It is um, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Okay, people, shall we chat?
Let's get uh, your hellos up on the screen. Uh, I've got lots and lots and lots of comments here. So as usual, I'll bring the laptop in so I can see and chat to you. So firstly, some hellos. Mark, you don't like my music. Three mix, uh, Facebook user said, is there not audio currently? No, we didn't have the intro audio playing for some reason, but anyway, uh, we had my audio, so that's an important thing. Um, so this is from GM, uh, our first question about this, who says, would there be any issues using two 2000s and two 3000s in a DJ setup, so in other words, having something like we've got here and then adding in a couple of CDJ uh, 2000s as well. No, there wouldn't, and that's what uh, James Hype used for quite a long time until he got four 3000s, uh, so that will be fine. Um, I've never even tried to mix on a Pioneer unit yet. I'm woefully unprepared for club gigs, says a few, a few of you, actually. Uh, this is pretty normal, so hopefully we're helping you to get a bit closer to it. You know, the record box software is free. So you can go and download the record box software. And then once you've done that, you can um, prepare your music, get all your cue points, you can export to USB drive, you can do all that stuff so you can get used to it um, in that way. And it doesn't cost you anything to do that. Uh, hello to Paul and Wayne and Gems and Scraggles. Uh, hello to DJ Lenny Danger. Uh, and to Mixmaster G. Mixmaster G has done a key shift comparison between the CDJ 3000s and the Denon SC 6000M. It's on his YouTube channel. So thank you for that, Mixmaster G. Uh, you're obviously not going to spill the beans here, um, but, uh, but uh, go and have a look at that if you're interested. Uh, right, so this is some Christian who says, I see people who choose the Denon or other brand units over the Pioneer ones. It makes me feel these people are throwing hate against Pioneer. You know, we are a... DJ school, and we have people who use all this equipment, we think there's absolutely no point in throwing around hate or indeed, you know, ridiculous praise. These companies are investigating their markets, the people who buy their stuff, and they're trying to make stuff that works for that audience. Uh, the Denon DJ stuff doesn't have the legacy thing of being in lots and lots of clubs all over the world. So Denon can innovate in a way that doesn't kind of alienate people who've been using their gear in clubs for that long in the way that Pioneer can't. So Pioneer DJ, if you think about it, every time they launch new gear, it's got to be close enough to the old gear for DJs who step up to it for the first time to, to kind of get it really quickly. So they're different brands, they're doing different things. And I think, you know, to glibly say, oh, one's brilliant and one's rubbish, it's kind of missing the point and is not very helpful, which is why we try and steer a clear line right down the middle of all this stuff. Um, so uh, this is from Alan, who says, I've got the Rain 12s. These are like motorized turntables or motorized controller turntables. And there isn't a pitch bend on the hardware. Is there a way to MIDI map pitch bend in Serato? I'm not sure, actually. Maybe there is, or maybe there is a, um, already a keyboard shortcut you can use for that, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, you are over on Facebook, so if someone's on Facebook and wants to answer Alan, and you know that, uh, go and uh, go do that there, I'd appreciate that. Uh, so then hello to Marty and to Sarah uh, and to M. Duor. Hello, M. Duor. Uh, and the Rockers, not seen you for a little while, my friend. Uh, lots of the old school Digital DJ Tips crew here today. Um, Balcony Beats crew, hello all of you. Uh, Roman in, Port in Prague rather, sorry about that. Uh, hello Roman over there in Prague. Uh, so, um, and again, you're just chatting to each other. I love this stuff. It's almost like I'm just a spectator on the chat going on inside our community, loving it. Uh, this then is um, from, I'm looking for the questions now. Um, James says the DJM 900 Nexus 2, that's this mixer we have here, Seems a pretty old mixer now. Is there any advantage to sticking with this mixer uh, over any other mixer? And you've got CDJ 300s. This mixer here basically does everything a mixer needs to do. Mixers are not rocket science. They need to take in the sources and mix them. This has got really good effects here and here. This has got really good sound quality. It's got the input routing you want. You can put two DJs in, you can put digital, line, phono. It's got auxiliary sends, so you can plug in uh, effects units in line with this and send what you want to them and bring them back. There's very little in here, really, that I think if they were to release a mixer today would change. Obviously a mixer today, they'd have a couple of features that are meant to make you think, oh, I need that. And any mixer update after this long, how long is this now, five years? Uh, is obviously gonna have some improvements, but honestly, there's nothing wrong with this. Mixers are one of those things that don't change very much. There's not an awful lot going on in the mixer world. So no, uh, I would say, you know, especially if you're thinking about buying a setup like this, I'm sure at some point this will get updated, but there's no reason not to buy the one you've got here. 
for certain. Is there nothing, nothing at all wrong with it? Uh, right, so we're going through your questions. DJ Stu C, Stu C says, why oh why did Pioneer DJ not include a mixer, sorry, a ethernet hub on the mixer? That is one thing actually, funny enough, when we're talking about this, one thing I would certainly expect to find on the mixer if they were to release one today. Uh, something to mean we don't have to have a separate ethernet hub like this to plug it together. It just means putting ethernet switches, uh, ethernet sockets and a switcher inside the unit with a few switches on the back, which of course is what uh, Den and DJ do on their mixers. I've got the Den and DJ, um, uh, which mixer have I got here from Den and just looking around. Ah, it's, uh, it's over in the other side of the studio, so I can't go and grab it in a hurry. But uh, basically that's what they do. They have all the sockets on the back. Yes, it would have been a lot better and I'm sure that's something that's gonna come very soon. Uh, Techno Beat says, uh, I know Pro DJ Link and the essential features, which we just talked about, but does it require an internet connection? No, not at all. I'm using that for, for other stuff as well. So it's just connected to the internet is the answer. So no, it doesn't require uh, an internet connection. Uh, Kada says, kudos for the tutorial. You're very welcome, Kada. Matthew, are the hot cues under the main screen? I can see eight buttons. Yes, they are. So the hot cues are along here. These are the eight hot cues for the units. They're not down at the bottom, as you would expect maybe on uh, other DJ gear. Uh, and Pioneer DJ told us that that's because DJs tend to kind of DJ like this with their hands on here. And they look at um, the, the CDJs that have come out of clubs that have been used for many years, and this is all worn. So they didn't want to put the buttons there in case it broke or whatever. So they've put them all at the top there. Uh, that's the reason for that, love it or hate it. Uh, DJ Dash says, Phil, it's always a pleasure to enjoy my coffee with your live streams. I'm glad you're enjoying your coffee, DJ Dash. Uh, I got CDJ 900s, but they're really slow with loading tracks into the decks, says DJ Thunder Roman. Yeah, that's one thing that has been improved, you know, as they've moved on. These are an awful lot quicker loading stuff, getting the queues loaded and stuff over the years. So, um, it's just one of those things they do have improved over the years and, and the only way to really get it better is to, is to buy the newer ones, unfortunately. Um, so uh, Mel says, I really love the Pioneer and Denon setups, but I'll never afford those. That's why I'm a big fan of the Prime 4 and the Prime 2, also half the price. You know, controllers give you so much, especially the standalone ones nowadays. If you want a lot of the functionality of this, the Pioneer, and you want Pioneer, the XDJ RX3 has got an awful lot of it. Very sadly, it doesn't have the key sync and the fuzzy key mixing stuff that I love, but it's got pretty much everything else. Uh, so those all in one units for the hobby DJ and also for a second setup for pro DJs are, just the ticket, they're, they're great, they're great value. And you've got to be very, very dedicated or have a lot of money to buy this stuff to use at home. Um, and that's the truth. Um, so uh, more comments on this. Um, please don't cut and paste your comments. That is a good time for me to say to you, keep calm, uh, hashtag ask if you want to ask a question. Please only ask once people. You cut and pasting your questions over and over again is something which just clogs up our feed here. Uh, and one day I won't have to say that and it will be lovely. Um, so the V10 doesn't have a hub, says DJ Stu C. Um, that's true and that is a newer mixer, but hey, I'd imagine that any new club mixer would have a hub. I'm only guessing, I've got no inside uh, info there at all. Um, and finally, um, could you please describe how to export my settings from Rekordbox if I would change to a new laptop. We've done all this stuff in the Rekordbox Made Easy course. It's something I can't really describe very easily here on a live stream. It's not, you don't need to buy our course to find that. It is in the instructions, uh, the PDF that comes with it. It's not hard to do that. So it is possible to move your, your collection reasonably easily from Rekordbox software, which is one of the things we've looked at today. Um, here's all your comments. Thank you very, very much for joining in. As you can see, I've had hundreds of comments to deal with. I'm very sorry I couldn't uh, deal with all of them today, but if you ask your comment underneath either the YouTube video or as we prefer the Facebook video of this because they stay there after the live is finished then we will get to you and we will answer you in the week um, as we like to do every week we try and answer every comment that you uh, give us but this has me oh by the way if you're a digital DJ lab owner digital DJ lab is our subscription program then you get a extended version of um, our brand new action plan that we've just added to Digital DJ Lab. I'm telling you this today because we're very excited about it, which is all those DJ errors that people make um, and what to do about them. It's a really good piece of training we've just added to Digital DJ Lab. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you'd like to uh, find out a bit more about it, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, click on DJ uh, Courses at the top, 
and scroll down and at the very bottom you'll see Digital DJ Lab. Click on there and you'll see what we are talking about. But meanwhile, for me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio, I've got to tell you, I'm not here next week. It's the Easter break next week, uh, but I will be here the week after. Uh, so I've got to tell you, um, Get good, get out there, make the moments, come join the site, get your free copy of the book. Again, it's really simple to join the site. Just go to that URL there. We'd love to give you the book. We'd love to give you our weekly training tips, mixes, free lessons, and all that stuff that we send out by email. And we'll also let you know when we do the full video about this which is going to be two hours long and it's not going to cost you a penny and that'll be going out on YouTube very soon. Uh, so do join. Uh, but meanwhile, enjoy yourselves. Have a great week and I'll see you again next time. Meanwhile, from me here in the uh, studio, bye-bye for now.